Hey friends all over the world, Dr. Keenan here. Sorry if the light looks a little creepy. I'm not trying to give creepy vibes. <laughs> uh, how do you recognize a demonic spirit? How to recognize a demonic spirit? You know, oftentimes I get messages I get messages all the time and people ask me, you know, I had this dream, I had this encounter, I had this feeling, uh, I dreamt about my grandmother, grandfather, uh, I ate food in my dream, uh, I, I felt this feeling, I saw something, I, I sensed something, this thought came to my head and, um, you know, the other day I was walking and, and I had this feeling and, and so forth and so on. I get messages all the time from people and they're asking me the question, what is this? You know, like that dream about my grandmother, what is it? was it a good dream? Was it a bad dream? Was it, is, should I be uh, concerned about something, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. People ask me all the time what stuff is. And so, I want to just share with you briefly how to recognize a demon spirit. Like, how do you recognize that something is indeed demonic? Uh, that dream that you had, that feeling that you had, how do you know that it's actually demonic? Well, that's a great question. So um, I'll try to be as quickly as I possibly can on this. So um, first of all, before we can ask what, how do you recognize if something is demonic? The first thing we have to establish is what is a demon? What is a demon? When we talk about demons, what are we talking about? You know, are we talking about a little short person with a uh, red spandex tights and a pitchfork? You know, are we, are we, are we talking about uh, some translucent thing that flies in the air. Are we are we talking about some snarling creature? What is a demon? So this is a really good question because you know a lot of people are not aware of what demons are. So because they lack awareness of actually what demons are, it's difficult for them to identify when demonic spirits are operating. So first and foremost, what is a demon? So when we talk about a demon, we are talking about a disembodied evil spirit, a, sp a spirit. It, it's corporeal. It's 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 um, it's not physical, but it's spiritual. Um, there's two theories about demons. Well, there's a couple of theories about the origin of, of demons. One of the classical theories of the origins of demons. Many people believe that demons are basically fallen angels that fell to the earth when Satan was cast out of heaven. And those are the demons. And so these are fallen angels. There's other people that espouse the belief that demons are actually the disembodied evil spirits of the Nephilim. Um, the disembodied evil spirits of the Nephilim. And so... There's two thoughts on what demons are. I know it's the origins of demons. But regardless of whether you subscribe to the first popular belief system or the second, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you understand that demons are unclean spirits. They are unclean spirits. Their goal is to defile, is to contaminate. In fact, uh, there are four things that d the devil does to attack a person or to you know, to, to harm a person, if you will. Number one, he tempts. Demons are agents of temptation. Number two, he deceives, right? Number three, he distracts. And number four, he destroys or oppresses. I use oppression and destruction similar. So the enemy comes to tempt, to deceive, to distract, and to destroy. 
So when we talk about demons, demons are actually not uh, little little things with wings and, you know, they can manifest in different ways. But the reality is these are evil spirits that seek to influence you to disobey God and thereby come out from under his hedge of protection and they can in turn execute their diabolical plan. Okay, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about demons. Sorry, I got a bunch of stuff on my face. Um, how do I know that something is a demon? Okay, so first of all, Satan is rebellious against God. He doesn't want to please God. He doesn't want to submit to God, um, all that kinds of stuff. Well, one of the ways I know that a demonic spirit is operating is that it, listen to this, frustrates or hinders or distracts from the purposes of God. You know, before you, before you assume, man, God gave me a dream, you have to look at the fruit of that dream. Does that dream draw you closer to God? Does that dream affirm his lordship in your life? Now, another thing, like, for example, a lot of people say, oh, you know, my grandmother came to me in a dream. Sometimes it's not your grandmother. It can actually be a demon spirit or a familiar spirit. Why do I say that? Because it can distract you from God's purpose in your life. All right. Number two, it can. Um, we talked about temptation. Uh deceived. Let's talk about that deception. Deception. Demons are agents of deception. Um, uh, their power, their, the, the greatest power in the demonic realm is lies. The, the, the assignment of a demon is to get you to believe a lie so that you can come into, come into bondage, right? To get you to believe a lie so that you can come under bondage. That is the purpose or the assignment of a demonic spirit. It's to get you to believe a lie so that you can in turn come under bondage. All right? So when, when a person is operating under a demonic power, that person is actually deceived. Write this down. They are under the power of deception. And one of the first and foremost deceptions in the demonic is to get you to believe that they're not there. Imagine if you were a squatter and you had the ability to build secret passageways in a house. And as you build these secret passageways, they allowed you to go undetected whenever the homeowner shows up. So the person says, oh, they put the keys in the door, they rattle the keys. You could go into your secret passageway and hide, and they would not be aware of your presence. So when we talk about demons, demons are evil spirits that do, they are, they are very aware and conscious, but they want you to lack awareness of their presence. They don't want you to know that they're there. Demons don't want you to know that they are operating in your life. Okay? And so we need to understand that that's one of the ways that we know, man, that's a demon. You know, when your uh, uh, infirmity, you know, when, when an unexplained illness or infirmity or a persistent illness or infirmity, despite medication, despite changing your diet, despite doing all the natural things, it still won't go away. Many times you're dealing with a demonic spirit. It could be a spirit of infirmity. It could be a spirit of, a spirit of premature death. Either way, you know that you're dealing with a demonic spirit. Another way um, that we can know that something is demonic is by discerning of spirits. So because demons are wicked spirits that masquerade 
they masquerade as, you know, something legitimate, something true. An angel of light, Paul says. The only way to fully detect their presence is by discerning of spirits, which is a gift from the Holy Spirit. He will enable the believer to distinguish whether or not this is a godly spirit from God, a ministering spirit, or a monitoring spirit. You see, discerning of spirits will help you to differentiate between a ministering spirit and a monitoring spirit. That God indeed sends ministering spirits to minister to us who are heirs of salvation. But sometimes there are other assignments that are not from God. So, uh, you know, that surveil you, that track you, that monitor you. These are not from God. And so you must discern whether this is benevolent or malevolent. Write that down. You have to discern whether or not whatever is coming against you or whatever you're experiencing is basically benevolent or malevolent. Okay? Um, one of the ways we know if something is demonic is how it makes us feel. So, for example, if you have a dream, I don't care what the dream is, but you come up out of the dream and you feel defiled, you feel dirty, you feel like, ah, uh, you feel confused, uh, you, you feel uh, in despair. Well, we know that those things are not from God. God doesn't give you a dream that makes you confused. Because he's not the author of confusion. The devil's the author of confusion, not God. God, uh, the Bible says what things are pure, what things are lovely, what things are of good report, are, are praiseworthy. Think on these things. So God tells us how we should be thinking. You know, things that author depressive thought patterns. Things that make you feel like quitting and giving up. Or, in some cases, doing harm to yourself or or acting out in a way that's contrary to God's will, we know that's not from God. Because God is the lifter up of our head. He's not the person that pushes your head down. Write that down. He's the lifter of your head, not the depressor of your head. So anything that is making you feel depressed, making you feel in despair, making you feel despondent, is not the Spirit of God. Write this down. The, 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 the demonic realm operates off of chaos, confusion, division, and strife. So now watch this. A lot of times people will come to me and they'll say, well, man, God told me to say this or God told me to do this. But the fruit of their actions is totally, totally filled with rascality. Totally filled with foolishness and confusion. And, and, and this thing that they're saying is from God is dividing the church, dividing families. God is not responsible. By their fruit, you shall know them. If somebody is claiming to speak for God or having a message from God or, or having a dream where God came to them and the fruit of that particular encounter is ungodly, you can almost guarantee, you can almost rest assured that that thing was not authored by God. Now, there are times where a person can get something uh, godly and something true and biblical, and for some reason it's distorted or it's twisted. You know, there's, th there's things like that. Maybe it was a godly dream, but maybe you didn't act on it in the way God would have intended you to. So it still has a negative outcome. But, but friends, I believe that God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. So when you say that the Holy Spirit told you something, when you say that the Holy Spirit is actually the one leading you to do something, and the fruit of it is against the Spirit, we can be sure that that was, in fact, a demonic spirit that is uh, 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 promoting that, and, and, and pomegating that particular ideology because of the fruit of it. So Jesus said, by their fruit you shall know them. When you feel like quitting all the time, if you feel like 
giving up. If you feel like, you know what, I'm just going to take my life. That's a demonic spirit. You don't sit there and just leave it, leave it on the table as your emotions and, and just normal fears. No, 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 no. When something has a, a an evil agenda attached to it, you can clearly see from the fruit of it, man, this thing is evil. This is an evil spirit. They defile, they seduce, they distort, they oppress. And if you find yourself under that kind of kind of feeling, under that kind of atmosphere, you need to recognize that this is a demonic atmosphere. I'm not supposed to sit and be like, okay, let me just live in this. No, I have to take authority over the atmosphere. I have to take authority over my thought life. I have to take authority over my mindset. I have to take authority over the feeling, that evil feeling that's coming over me. I have to recognize this is not from God. One of the reasons why so many people are being oppressed demonically is because they have conflated God with the devil. Things that they should be attributing to the devil, they're attributing to God. And things they should be attributing to God and him alone, they're attributing to the demonic realm. And this is very, 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 very real. Millions of people are being affected by this and because we're not talking about it in the church and because we're not we're not really dealing with this. I'll never forget one time I go to um, it was an Assemblies of God meeting and I was praying over a woman. Uh, one of the people in my church was there and they were a catcher. They were acting as an usher slash catcher slash altar worker. And this petite Indian woman walked down and uh, we had a prayer call for back pain. We said, if anybody's experiencing back pain, I want you to come to the altar. Well, this woman came to the altar uh, for prayer specifically for back pain. When I began to pray for her, the Holy Spirit makes it very clear. He says, do not pray for this woman. I said, Lord, what do you mean? This woman is, as, is asking me for prayer for back pain and all this stuff. He says, no, 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 that's not her problem. The Lord begins to speak to her. And he says, speak to me concerning her. And he says this, he says, ask her about her involvement in the occult. So I asked her, I said, the Holy Spirit is telling me to ask you, what is your involvement, if any, in the occult? And she says to me with a straight face, no, 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 I'm, I'm not involved in the occult. I've never, I've never been involved in the occult at all. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know anything about the occult. I said, are you a Hindu? She says, she says, oh yeah, I, I was, I used to be a Hindu and she's a Christian now, supposedly. She says, I used to be a Hindu. And in fact, I was dedicated to Vishnu. Even as a child, I have his markings all over my body that were tattooed over, over my body when I was just a little baby. And so I said to this woman, I said, in Jesus name, I, I, I cast that spirit out of you. And when I said that a man's voice spoke through this little petite Indian woman and said, I will never let her go. It was, a, I have a deep voice. It was 10 times deeper than I don't even know if that's possible. He said, I will never let her go. Spoke through her and said, I will never let her go. And we literally began to take authority over the spirit of Hinduism. We took authority over the spirit of the occult. We took authority over the spirit of witchcraft, divination, sorcery, false religion, idolatry. We went down the thing. And when we did that, the woman began to manifest and rise. And suddenly, whatever was operating inside of her was broken. Now, let me tell you something. If you don't think demons are real, you are sadly mistaken. The purpose of this video is not to glorify the devil or to give him more credit than he deserves but it is to equip you so that you understand what is and what is not. Hear me by the Holy Spirit. Many people believe that if they're not shaking and vibrating and foam coming out of their mouth or them levitating off of the ground, that there's no demon involved. There. No, a demon can occupy the battleground of your mind. A demonic power can occupy the battleground of your mind. Have you ever had a thought 
a thought that was persistent, that was pervasive, that was so strong you couldn't shake it. And you're saying, man, I don't want to think this. It just keeps coming into my head. Many times that is actually a demonic spirit. When something just won't break, it's just persistent. It just keeps coming. No matter what you do, no matter how hard you pray, it just keeps coming. Many times, friends, you're dealing with a demonic spirit. It is not just something normal. It is not just something typical. It is not just something, oh, I just, oh, that's just my feelings. Oh, I just didn't have enough coffee. We have to stop trying to relegate things to just natural things. Now, listen, I don't believe everything's a demon. I believe sometimes you need to go get something checked out. Don't, don't get me wrong. But what I'm trying to explain to you is that some things, even people's thinking, the Lord spoke to me and said to me, he said, any thought that makes you a victim is from the pit of hell. The Lord spoke to me. He says, any thought that comes into your head that you desire to entertain that makes you to be a victim comes from the pit of darkness. And so what do you have to do? Whenever you are experiencing something or you have questions that whether something is from God or from the enemy, begin to take authority over it. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. This is a Robert Graham shirt, by the way. They need to pay me on the Robert Graham shirts that I have bought over the years. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. So you, once you recognize that this thing is indeed demonic, you can then begin to take authority over that spirit. Take authority over that spirit. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I take authority over that spirit. And, if, and, and depending on the scenario, I cast that spirit out of, of so-and-so. I cast it out of my home. I cast it out of my children, whatever the case may be. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Now, in closing, I want you to think about this. Um... The devil is a master of disguise. He masquerades himself as an angel of light. He walks around pretending to be something that he's not. So what you need to do is pray, number one, for greater discerning of spirits. Lord, give me the ability to discern what is from you and what is not from you. What is godly and what is wicked. What is benevolent versus what is malevolent. You need to know the difference in these last days. Friends, that's enough for tonight. But remember, I need you to share this, like, subscribe, and remember that Jesus is Lord. Do me a favor, tag a friend, and comment below. I want to hear from you.